Welcome to Chapter 1 of Statics of Rigid Bodies. Dito pag-uusapan natin yung mga fundamental concepts ng engineering mechanics. What is mechanics? Mechanics is a branch of physical sciences that is concerned with the state of rest or motion of bodies that are subjected to the action of forces. Meron tayong tatlong branches ng engineering mechanics. Rigid body mechanics, deformable body mechanics, and the fluid mechanics. Ang concern natin dito is the rigid body mechanics. Yung rigid body mechanics ay merong dalawang parts, si statics at si dynamics. Statics deals with equilibrium of bodies. Ibig sabihin ang pinag-uusapan natin dito ay ang mga body at rest or those which are moving with a constant velocity. While dynamics deals with the accelerated motion of bodies. We can consider statics as a special case of dynamics wherein the acceleration is equal to zero. Pag-uusapan natin yung mga fundamental concepts. Ano yung rigid body? A rigid body is definite amount of matter, the part of which are fixed in position relative to one another. Bodies are never rigid. They deform under action of forces. Sabi nga natin, kung meron tayong isang body and this is acted upon by a force P, of course, magkakaroon tayo ng deformation. And we have the deformation delta. But, deformation is negligible compared to the size of the body. And the body may be assumed rigid like steel or cast iron. What is a force? Force is the action exerted by one body upon another. Yung units na ginagamit natin dito, in English system, we have the pounds. Or, ginagamit din natin yung kips. What is kips? Ang ibig sabihin ng kips ay kilopound. So, 1 kilopound is equal to 1,000 pound. And in metric system or in SI unit, ang ginagamit natin dito is Newton. Or of course, no, yung multiple ng Newton, we have the kilonewton, we have the giganewton, the meganewton, and etc. The characteristics of force are its magnitude, the position of its line of action, and the direction or the sense in which the force acts along its line of action. We consider this force here. First, uh, this is force P, 1000 Newton, directed at 30 degrees from the horizontal. So, isa-isahin natin yung characteristics ng forces. Pag sinabi nating magnitude, the 1,000 Newton here is your magnitude. The position of its line of action is this angle 30. Kung pwede naman na yung ating direction is in terms of slope. So, this is the vertical and the horizontal of the slope. So, that is rise over run. And when we say direction, this is the line of action. Ito yon, yung arrow. No? So, kung ito naman yung direction niya, this is directed to the lower left. And this is directed upward. This is directed downward. What is the external and internal effect of forces? The internal effect of force is to produce stress and deformation in the body. Anong ibig sabihin nun? So, sabi ko nga kanina, kung meron tayong body in consideration, that is the force P. So, that P is a compressive force. So, magkakaroon siya ngayon ng deformation wherein the body will shorten. Pag sinabi naman nating external, so pinag-uusapan natin dito yung principle of transmissibility. Principle of transmissibility of a force states that the external effect of force of 
a rigid body is the same for all points of application along its line of action. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Kung meron tayong isang body dito, if you applied a force P here, a pushing force P, no? and this is the line of action, pag nag-apply ka ng the same force P sa line of action dito sa point B, ibig sabihin magkakaroon ka ng the same na effect doon sa body. Ibig sabihin, kung meron ka ditong motion, if so dito yung pushing force natin will tend the body to move to the right and this is the distance no ng displacement niya that displacement is also equal kung tayo ay nag-apply ng force P to the right at point B as long as si point B should be in the line of action kung saan si point A natin ay in-apply. Observe that the system of two bars in this figure, it is hinged together at D. It is not inherently rigid. It is the hinge support at C and E that restrict relative movement of the bars. Since we don't have a single rigid body, both the external reaction and the internal effects will be different if P is applied first at A and then at B. Kung i-consider naman natin ito, so nagkaroon tayo ng roller at point E and then nadagdagan tayo ng isang member. So, yung application ng point P sa point A natin, ito yung reaction natin, the CY, the CX, we have here the EY. If we have the CY, the CX, and the EY as your reaction, pag nag-apply tayo ng force dito sa point A, ang mga value ng mga reactions na to ay hindi magbabago kung tayo ay mag apply ng the same magnitude of force considering na si point B is in the line of action. Kung ang pinag-uusapan natin doon ay ang external effect ng force P. Pero, Kung internal effect naman ang pinag-uusapan, kung si force P is applied at point A, magkakaroon tayo ng bending at the member CD. But, kung dito tayo nag-apply sa point B, magkakaroon naman tayo ng bending dito sa member DE. So, magkaiba yung effect external and internal effect ng mga forces. Sa so pag-uusapan naman natin yung force systems. A force system is a collection of forces acting at a specified locations. May also include couples. The set of forces shown on the free body diagram make up of a force system. Force system is simply a term used to describe group of forces. So, meron tayong classification ng force system. Una is according to the plane. So, this is according to plane. We have the coplanar and we have the non-coplanar force systems. Pag sinabi natin coplanar force systems, Pagpalagay natin that this is a plane. So, yung forces natin is acting only on that plane. Pag non-coplanar, ang pinag-uusapan na natin dito is more than one plane. Kung meron kang force dito, F1, you have another force here, F2. Kung titingnan natin, si F1 and si F2 are coplanar. Pero kapag nagdagdag pa tayo ng force dito, that is, force 3, 
and another force here, force 4 or F4. So this system now is non-coplanar. We can also classify the four systems according to the line of action. According to line of action. So we have the concurrent, parallel, and non-concurrent. Ano pinagkaiba nun? Pag concurrent, ibig sabihin, nagmi-meet sila at one point. That's concurrent. Or pwede tayo magkaroon ng concurrent forces na hindi obvious. So halimbawa, this is the force 1 and we have here force 2 and force 3. So kahit nakikita natin dito na hindi sila nagmi-meet, pero yung line of action nila is directed toward this point. So, meaning that could be considered as a concurrent force system. Pag sinabi naman nating parallel force system, simple lang. So, itong dalawang force na to is parallel with each other. So, this is P1 and this is P2. Non-concurrent force system naman, ibig sabihin ay hindi sila nagmi-meet. So, this is F1 and this is F2. And another point here, meron tayong isa pang dyan. So, this is a non-concurrent force system. As a recap, so, force system can be classified according to the plane. It's either coplanar or non-coplanar. Or, according to the line of action, force system could be concurrent, parallel, or non-concurrent. Ngayon, pag-uusapan naman natin to. So, we have the coplanar. Under the coplanar, pwede tayo magkaroon ng concurrent, parallel, and non-concurrent. So, meaning, we could have the coplanar, concurrent force system, coplanar, parallel force system, coplanar, non-concurrent force system. So, under the non-coplanar, or since this is three-dimensional, we are also referring this as spatial. We have the non-coplanar concurrent force system. We have the non-coplanar parallel, non-coplanar non-concurrent. So we have here a sample of a coplanar concurrent force system. This is a coplanar parallel force system. This is a coplanar non-concurrent force system. This is a non-coplanar concurrent force system. Non-coplanar parallel for system and non-coplanar non-concurrent for system.